Hey everybody, KMO here, and I know I haven't put out a video in a long time. Uh, I think it's because I've been feeling good. <laughs> Yesterday, though, um, I was, you know, because of uh, the holiday on Monday, the gym was closed, I hadn't worked out on Monday, and I didn't work out over the weekend, and I was just kind of behind on exercise, which takes a pretty immediate psychological toll on me. I was in a dark mood, grumpy, grumbly, and in the, the pits of my, you know, darkness, I thought, Urgh, I feel mad, I should make a video. <laughs> well, I didn't. <laughs> I waited, and I'm doing better today. Today is an absolutely beautiful day, as you saw in that super short clip that I put before the title sequence. Uh, but it's also very windy, and there's lots of leaves on the ground, and of course, bright day, people are out on their motorcycles, so bad day for recording outside. But I'll record inside. And I don't have really any <laughs> any idea of what I'm going to talk about here, uh, except that I'm going to talk for about nine minutes, because that's how long the, uh, the drawing clip that you're seeing right now lasts. And this is a sped up clip. This is probably about 90 minutes worth of drawing that you're gonna see over the next nine minutes. Provided you hang in there with me and watch, or you know, provided you're watching at all. Some people I know just listen to these things and that's all good. So I made a video, I don't know, a while back. Uh, I could look up the exact, da exact date, but you know, it was the day that the Biden campaign announced Kamala Harris as his running mate and it irritated me so much, I put up a video saying, okay, that's it, I'm voting for Trump. Grr. Well, I've already mailed in my ballot. I voted for Howie Hawkins. Uh, I've never voted for the Green Party before. I usually vote Libertarian, but as I've mentioned elsewhere, I just can't hang with the Libertarian objection to universal health care. I mean, every other country that's worth a shit does it. It's not rocket science. It's not magic. It's not anything special. It won't destroy the economy. It's, it's just a normal thing that normal countries do. It's not socialism. It is socialized medicine, but you know, so what? We socialize all kinds of stuff. And you know, the system has been turned into just this extortion racket, you know? You're sick, you're hurt, oh, ho, ho, we got you over a barrel. Guess what? We want it all. We don't care if you have insurance or not. Whatever you have, we want it. Hand it over. You know, that's our medical system now, and that's absurd. It's just absurd. But I'm not here to bitch about stuff. I'm just here to tell you about what's going on with me right now. First of all, I should say, hey, I do a uh, live stream every day, every day, Monday through Friday, I should say, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern, which I realize is super early for you guys on the West Coast. So, you know, look for that, that schedule to adjust, to be more friendly, but uh, maybe I'll just, you know, try to grab the highlights from it and, and share with them in uploaded videos like this one. So, Geb, the webcomic, we haven't posted a new episode of it on the website in months. And that's because all of my efforts uh, that go into Geb have been going into preparing a print, two issues actually, of a print comic. And without the weekly deadline, you know, it's really easy for me to procrastinate on that. And now everything was done, like a couple weeks ago, everything was done, ready to go. And then we decided, you know what, there's five pages of supplemental material in the back of issue two. Let's just do five more pages of story. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm, I'm working to crank out five additional, you know, content story pages for the interior of the book. But once that is available, <laughs> I'll be sure to let you know. But you can see me working on it pretty much every day, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And if you're watching this video, you know, you pretty much know how to find me on YouTube. So the same handful of people have been showing up most days, and the the most consistent uh, provider of feedback in the chat has been Ed up in Montreal and Les in Poland, with uh, Parker in Virginia being uh, a close third. So I'd like to uh, converse with more of you. You know, it is an opportunity to uh, hit me up with questions and stuff in real time, and I, I do answer in real time. I do tend to uh, lose myself in the drawing and forget to look at the chat for long periods, and if that happens, you know, just hang out or just, you know, type a period and then enter, and maybe I'll catch out of the peripheral vision that something has changed on the chat screen. But, Howie Hawkins, so here's the thing. A thing, anyway, you know, the thing, here's the thing. Here's a thing. After I cast my ballot, this is a couple weeks ago, put it in the mail, I followed all the steps so that my vote would be counted. Uh, for me, the election's over. <laughs> and yet, I'm sort of scratching my head at why all these other people are still going on about it. 
It's like, it's done. It's over, right? Oh, no. There's still the actual election day where people will go and vote in person. Do I have an opinion about whether it's a good idea to vote in person uh, during a pandemic? No, not really. I hate to say it, but I don't care. I, I am resigned to the inevitability or seeming inevitability that Biden will win and that he will not be competent to be president for long and that, well, I don't think he's competent at all, but I think it will be obvious to everybody pretty soon, you know, after the election, that he's not really their guy and they'll start maneuvering to uh, put Harris in the top slot. And it's not anything I want, but at the same time, I mean, I know Howie Hawkins isn't going to win and I'm not particularly enthusiastic about Mr. Trump. So, you know, what are you going to do? Focus on stuff that you care about, tune out the bullshit as much as possible, and try to disrupt the, uh, the violent fantasies when they hijack the mind, which they've done even today. So things are still, I would say, going well with Rose, my, uh, my love in the Philippines, whom I have never met, <laughs> but we talk, you know, for hours every day, not the full four hours that we were doing for so long there, you know, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. Now it's like maybe 45 minutes in the morning and 90 minutes at night. It's a pretty full call. Still, it's a lot of time to spend on the phone with somebody or on WhatsApp. She did finally tell her parents about me. <laughs> I told my mother that I had a long-distance girlfriend in the Philippines, and my mother was not pleased to hear it. Not that she has anything against people from the Philippines, but it is on the other side of the planet. And on the last thing she said to me in that conversation as we were saying goodbye was, please don't move to the Philippines. <laughs> You know, my mom is 80 and she has a you know, reasonable expectation thinking that if I get on a plane and go to the Philippines, that that'll be the last time she ever sees me. She was really not happy when I mentioned that uh, I might try to lure my sons over there at some point. But now, um, you know, Rose and I are exploring fantasy scenarios. And uh, one that we've sort of landed on is that she just comes here rather than me going there. And guess where we're going to live? Puerto Rico. <laughs> Yep, seemed like Puerto Rico was a possibility that would never materialize. It may yet. So anyway, I realize this is all very personal stuff, and uh, maybe you're not interested in personal stuff right now because you haven't voted yet, and for you the election's not over, and gosh darn it, everybody's just a buzz over it. Do I have anything at all to say about politics right now? It's kind of strange. I, I watch Rising every day, as I've mentioned, and it's strange to see people that I've interviewed show up on Rising. <laughs> like Ben Burgess was on today. You know, most of the people that uh, end up on Rising whom I have interviewed are people who have written books for Zero Books and that Doug Lane has put me in touch with, you know, to record an interview. But uh, Harvey J.K. is another person that I've interviewed whom I have seen on Rising. Uh, it's, it's just weird. <laughs> it's weird. And it's also weird that, you know, I'm mostly known for the podcast and these days... You know, I've got the free podcast and the paid podcast. And of course, most of my effort needs to go to the podcast that people pay to listen to, which, you know, then I'm doing comics and I'm doing videos and I'm doing, you know, mundane camera work for the local TV station. And the free, pod pa free podcast just doesn't come to the top of my to-do list very often. And yet still, that's the thing that I'm known for. <laughs> Like most of the people who listen to the Zero podcast have never read my comic strip and, you know, apparently don't care to. And I get it, you know, even my kids, my young, young adult male children have no interest in comic books or comic strips. I mean, it's kind of a, a holdover from a previous generation and even not much of a holdover because, you know, the, the proper comic book industry, particularly Marvel, but maybe DC as well, um, they've gone all, you know, all woke and alienated a bunch of their traditional audience. And at the same time, where actually this happened before, you know, for a very long time, they just kept hiking prices, hiking, hiking, hiking. I remember when Marvel Comics went from being 30 cents to 35 cents, and I was outraged. And now, you know, a normal comic book that you'd buy in the, it takes you 15 minutes to read, if that costs $5, you know, who can afford that? People who work in Silicon Valley, people who work in... You know, people who work in New York City or Boston or the prosperous places, people with good jobs. Yeah, they can still afford to pay five dollars for a, a comic book that takes 10 or 15 minutes to read. But I can't, you know, and my kids can't. And most most people that I'm thinking of as I'm writing the comic strip, they can't afford that sort of thing. So I'm happy that the the print comic that we're going to be doing is, you know, it's going to cost what it costs. It's going to cost, you know, what it costs to get it printed, plus a little bit of profit. 
So it's not going to be 35 cents like the comic books of my youth, but um, most of the material that is between those pages is available for free online. There, are, there is some material that will not be on the website that is in the comic book, and you know, so it goes. Such are the, the perks of actually putting down some money for something. But anyway, I, I see I've talked past my 10 minute uh, mark, so I don't even know what visuals you're looking at right now. Maybe I'll grab some more drawing video. But just, just to check in with me, to say hey. <laughs> For the most part, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not thinking about politics, not thinking about big picture issues so much. And uh, that's why I'm not putting out many videos, or any videos recently. And I can't promise that I'm gonna, you know, change my ways and, and get uh, prolific again with the video creation. I might. I'm sure I'll hit patches of productivity again when it comes to videos, you know, prolific productivity. But I can't say when that'll be, and I can't say what'll trigger it. Hopefully, <laughs> something trivial, not something world-shaking. All right, I'm out. Talk to you later. <laughs>